I should probably be uh, recording this right now. So I'm going to go ahead and, um, and do that. And I'm so just so excited um, to have everybody here. It looks like we have a few more people waiting in the um, waiting room, but I am just so excited to see you guys here. Some um, old faces, um, some new ones. Patricia, I'm so glad to meet you. I was excited that you're here. Um, Alan, I'm so excited that you are here. Um, let's see who else, uh, who else we have here. I just wanted to, um, thank you guys for coming. So, um, Kristen and Melissa, and actually I think, um, is it you're under your husband's name maybe, but I think that's Tracy. So I'm super excited to, um, to have you here, but I, um, I just wanted to welcome you all. And I'm very sorry for the, um, for the reschedule. I know, I, you know, some people could make it at 10 and then some people could make it at three, but I just did not want to make, um, this something that, um, I didn't, I didn't want it to be something that, um, you know, was, interrupted by a bunch of, you know, uh, a, a bunch of challenges and stuff like that. So I'm um, very excited that you guys, um, the people who could be here live that are here live. And um, for people who don't know me, right, you've never uh, been on any of my trainings, maybe you've been referred here. There's an awful lot of people whose names I don't exactly recognize. Some of you guys are already Women Who Wow members, and we just haven't had as much time to connect. And other you guys um, have been with me for a long time. But for the new people, people. Um, I just want to remind you guys, like, I don't talk, uh, you know, I don't talk and teach on stuff, um, frankly, that I haven't mastered, right? It's kind of a rule of how I help people is I, I encourage you to market what you have personally mastered. And, um, and, you know, for, for people helping people make money coaching, um, I do, uh, this is something I've done for a long time. I've been in the coaching industry since way, way, way back, you know, probably, uh, right around when like ICF became a thing. I am not ICF certified. Frankly, I have a ba basically like a pay for play kind of certification. Like I call it a skeleton certification, which nobody asks about, nobody really cares. Um, and I began my dream really with just that skeleton certification and, um, and a hope and a dream. So, uh, so this training is by somebody who has, um, you know, been here, um, profiting from for uh, well over, um, you know, a decade and a half. And I've seen a lot of things in the industry come and go, right? I've seen a lot of um, things happen that everybody jumped on board with. And then later on, you know, it, it kind of um, fizzled out and then you were kind of left uh, wherever you were before. And, um, and I've personally like one-on-one -on -one mentored in various capacities, um, you know, hundreds of coaches to six figures and beyond and thousands in less direct mentorship through my groups and programs. But as I said before, like my journey began with a little more than a skeleton certification, which was essentially a pay-for-play thing and a hope and a dream. And it's grown to multi six figures and even seven figures of income. And um, so I, I, I want to tell you why I'm sharing my income because I don't often do this. I think it's absolutely ignorant for the people who are like putting their income on their website. Like, you know, they lots of podcasters do that. I think that's just begging for trouble. Uh, there are certain things that I feel like, um, you know, it, I just don't go into specifics about. Um, one of those is how much money you're making or perhaps, you know, maybe how amazing your husband is in the bedroom. Like you can talk about certain things and other things I just feel like are just unwise um, to talk about. But I do want to share my income with you um, at least up through 2010. And I'm sharing it with you for two reasons, uh, two primary reasons. One, if I can make this money while refusing to travel, even at my max travel um, back in the day, you know, if I can make this money without traveling more than once a month, and I even quit that, that was way too much for me. Um, if I can make this money um, while living in a small town, um, while never until like literally, I think October or November of last year, having anything more than a very, very part-time VA. And if I can make this money while being as technically unsavvy as I am, then anybody can do it, right? Like anybody who knows me at all knows that I'm imperfect, I'm flawed, um, and a little or a lot, like kind of by the seat of my pants. Like I don't work all of the time, not even close. My life and family always comes ahead of my um, of my business. And, um, and I tell you, this has been a really a, a motivating factor 
for me because when I was coming up, right, um, I've been an entrepreneur now for almost 22 years. And when I was coming up, like there were just weren't a lot of female examples of like wild success at where their personal life was also, you know, kind of sorted, right? Like they had the marriage that they wanted and um, relationships that were deep and sustaining and all of that stuff. So um, I do take quite a bit of pride in that. I am not one of those uh, uh, people who want you to like live a certain way like right now, like give up your life right now in order to like build this business that you can enjoy later. Um, I'm a firm believer, um, just like with kids, you raise them in the way that you want them to go with a business, you want to grow it in a way that you want to sustain it. So um, anyway, so if you're new to me, I just kind of want to put that out there. Um, so I do want to talk a little bit about my income. So um, when I started coaching, um, which would have been, like I said, you know, maybe 15 years ago, um, I started charging $167 a month. Now, within 16 months of that, I was charging $1,200 a month, which seemed like an outrageous amount of money, right, to me at the time. And um, and then I, I worked up to uh, where when I was working with uh, private clients, when I quit working with private clients, I charged $12,000 down and then twenty. $2,500 a month. And I met with my clients twice a month. Now, this is, I'm sharing this because, um, you know, there's a difference in me as a coach at $167 a month and $2,500 a month. And that is not in some difference in certification or fanciness or any of that. It was really um, a difference in the results of my clients, right? The people that I worked with, with $167 a month, um, you know, when we were talking, like some Sometimes they were window shopping or making their kids a PBJ or whatever. They were just playing around, right? The people who were hiring me at $2,500 a month, they were serious, right? <laughs> like they were in it to win it. They were getting results. And so I just wanted to um, put that out there because uh, you, what you charge and how you're seen in the marketplace has everything to do, not just with your success, but with the uh, results and the testimonials that you get from clients. So um, I, I may, I, I charge these fees. I'm not, I've never been. Um, famous. I've never really been um, focused on all of the new bright, shiny objects um, that are constantly being sold to uh, coaches. I've never hired a branding agency. I've never paid to play in any way, um, whether to be like for like media, like whether to be featured on some magazine or um, or pay like paying to, to be in the Forbes coaches council so I can be published on Forbes. I've never paid to take the stage at anybody's event. And so you know, all of the things that have like been marketed to you, I've literally never done them. And I say that because I'm still um, one of the more successful female coaches in the industry. Um, I've made money, not just on one-on-one -on -one coaching. Cause I, I want to tell you this, cause I was never, I, I never like was in love with the idea of being a one-on-one -on -one coach. That's the truth. Like I just was, I, I always aspired to have a coaching business that had a little bit more leverage than that, right? Like even though I was making daggone good money, right? Like at $2,500 a month, meeting with people for about 60 to 90 minutes twice a month, like that's good money. But it was, it still felt a little like, constrictive to me. So other ways I've made money, I, and again, like up until 2010, um, were coaching packages. So like a one and done kind of thing, like a marketing blueprint for between $1,800 and $2,500, depending on the year, small group, three-day intensive sold for between three and $5,000. And this was way back then, like this was way back when we'll talk a lot about how you package and charge because it absolutely matters. And when I charge, I mean, I had my first three day event, which I sold for $3,000 paid up front. Um, it was like well before like social media was really a thing. Um, and I'll never forget this one lady, um, it drove in from Georgia to Virginia. I've always had my event or usually I've had my events, um, in my hometown because it's easy and convenient for me. And I thought, well, like if, if planes can go to, you know, Texas or Vegas or whatever, they can certainly come to Norfolk and, and come and see me. So um, I, I built the business around like how I really wanted to live. And so my first, I'll never forget my first $3,000 um, three day intensive. I remember I was a little bit worked up over it. Like I just, you know, you want to, you want to be able to deliver what you promised. And it was the first time I'd done it in that format. And um, I'll never forget this woman who had been, she had driven from Atlanta and she, um, 
she came in kind of breathless that morning and I was there like right on the whiteboard or something. And she's like, um, are you Michelle? Cause you know, again, social media was in its infancy. And I was like, yeah, you know, and, she, and um, she goes, oh my God, thank God you're here. And she got in her head um, so much on the way there, like that I would like, it was like some scam and she was going to have to tell her husband that she had given somebody $3,000 and they didn't show up and there was no event and all this stuff. So, you know, but I, I started selling those pretty early on. Um, and even back in 2008, 2009, I had um, a membership called like the coaching gym. It was a recurring membership option that generated uh, about $10,000 a month. And it was very easy. The tools that I used were magic jack phone and email. And, um, and, and all of this was over a full decade ago. So I just wanted to share that because some people look at me now and they see I'm just getting started. That's how I feel. Um, other people look at me now and say, well, you have some assets, you know, like um, in the media and stuff like that, that let, you know, make things easier on you. And so I wanted to share that all of this was well before 2010. And I've only increased um, in all those ways since then. Um, I've constantly curated my own coaching business to be even more and more aligned with how I want to live and the women that I want to work with and stuff like that. So, um, you know, in fact, the, the, when I stopped coaching one-on-one, -on -one, when I gave up my private clients, um, you know, and, and focus, you know, singularly on women who, wow, um, I had given it up for one primary reason, which sounds so silly, even as I say it now, but I hated having recurring weekly appointments. It felt like really restrictive to me or constrictive to me. And um, also I just kind of like, I was falling so much in love with my own business that that's all I really wanted to, to think about. And so I didn't want to have to think about clients' business. And when I gave up that last batch of one-to-one -one clients, it was bringing in well over, well, not well over, I think it was like, I think it was like 11, um, hundred dollars a month because some people weren't paying the full 2500 because they had been with me a while they were grandfathered in but it was around eleven hundred dollars a month and I didn't do that overnight like I do everything I tell you today like um, I do understand the need to have financial income coming in, right? Like anybody who's ever talked to me one-on-one, -on -one, I want your bills paid. I want you to be able to have financial freedom to, you know, uh, send your kids to the schools that you want and to uh, make sure that you are, um, you know, that you can have healthcare that you want and stuff like that. Like I'm all about that. And I am the uh, breadwinner of my own home. And so um, I, I'm never like, um, I don't know, willy nilly about income. I didn't just like fire those clients and hope and pray on women who wow. I allowed the, the uh, women who wow, which is my membership program. I allowed that to kind of gain um, steam as I slowly decreased my dependence on the one-on-one, -on -one, right? So I never really felt a huge, um, I didn't feel a huge drop in income. So here we are in 2021. And I want to talk to you about your coaching business or the one you're considering, right? And there are a lot of people in this training that I really don't know. I'm thrilled to have you here. I'm always thrilled uh, to meet uh, more new people, especially for this, because it means that um, you were probably referred here. So I'm very excited about that. Um, some of you guys I know are already coaches, but you're not getting paid what you're worth, right? Like you are worth a lot and you're not getting paid that. It is extremely disheartening. I do know your pain, um, whereas I do know that it can affect your uh, self-esteem and your confidence, even in your own expertise. When, you know, people are at a girl in you and at a girl in you, and you're, they're so excited about certification and so excited about what you're going to do. And then when it comes time to buy from you, like they go all of a sudden cold and silent, right? Like I do get it. Um, and so I just want to let you know that if you give yourself over to this training, um, it can and will help you get where you need to go. Um, there are uh, points that I'm going to call out throughout that are like action items and thinking prompts and things that will really make a big difference to you. So I know some of you guys are already coaches. You're just not making the money that you deserve on, you know, it's a sliding scale, right? For the people that are here. Um, and others are other professionals, right? So I see a couple uh, doctors, veterinarians, um, and some people are not here. They're going to be watching the replay, dentists, therapists, attorneys, um, authors, and, um, and even some people who are full-time employees, but they have a side gig dream, right? That they want to do in coaching. And there's no reason you can't be making six figures in coaching income by the end of 2021, regardless of where you're starting now. Um, I said in the email to you guys that I recently opened up a private mentoring program for just a handful of female coaches. And in six months, I want them all to be six figure coaches. Um, and I feel absolutely confident I can get to 
can do that. But I want to tell you um, who I targeted when I decided to do this mentorship program. It wasn't like, you know, to get six figures in income a year, it's, um, you know, it's what is it? $8,333 a month, right? So I didn't target uh, people already making $7,500 in income a month from their coaching. <laughs> I targeted people who are making um, less than $5,000 a month. And in some cases, um, they're starting at zero or maybe their best month was $1,200. Um, but I've worked with a lot of coaches to take them from not earning hardly anything or not earning anything to over six figures in a pretty short period of time. So no matter where you're starting today, I can help you create sort of an ease-based practice, right? Um, generating at least six figures in income, um, particularly now in this environment, um, it is getting easier than ever. Um, and there are some challenges, but all the challenges I'm going to detail today have very unique opportunities. And so, um, you know, we're, we're going to, we're going to bust through those today. And, um, and I think that you'll see the opportunity and you'll see how quickly this can be done, but only if you're willing, right? So I only want to coach the willing because coaching is really about selling access to you, right? Selling access to you. When you think about the deliverables of coaching, and this is where people get mucked up, right? Like they, you think about the deliverables of coaching and you are asking people to pay for conversations with you. That is a big shift from like a service-based business, like landscaping or chiropractic care or dentistry or surgery or whatever it is, right? Or even like copywriting, it is a big leap. And so you've got to be willing to own your own value. You have got to be willing to put some uh, meat and some teeth behind what you know people should be coming to you um, to get access to, right? So I only coach the willing. Um, I am going to share some challenges. Like I said, but each of them come with their own opportunity. We're going to talk about how to package coaching, right? Like that package that access, what it takes to make real money and then the day-to-day -day of just kind of making this work, right? Uh, because a lot of the uh, things that you see online from what I call the super coaches, right? Like, and what I really mean are like the big name coaches and mostly what you're seeing would take you way off course for building your coaching practice. Number one, it's gonna cost you money and not make you money. Number two, it's gonna keep you busy doing things and checking boxes, but you're not busy making an impact, right? So uh, so you know, we're gonna talk about the real day-to-day. -day and um, so what do, you make, what do you need to make six figures of coaching income? I identified three things that I, I think are really critically important for you to make uh, coaching income. The first is a story, you believe in, and we're in your notes if you like to follow along with notes, but the first is a story you believe in, right? At the core of a coaching business, you've got to have something that you believe other people want and are willing to pay for, right? Um, that, that paying the, something that you have, a unique lens that you see through, a unique perspective, a unique system, a uh, unique approach, something that you believe people should be paying for, right? Essentially, you've got to have a story that answers the question, what should people learn from you or what should people do with you at their side, right? And this is honestly where most coaches get hung up, right? And it's like, why work with me? And, and people will say things like, well, I'm certified by blank, 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 blank. And I'm, you know, I've got this and that, and I've got this many followers and they think all this stuff matters, right? But the first thing you need for people to pay you what you deserve is you've got to have a story that you believe in, <laughs> right? That you say they should learn this from me over any and every other option out there right? If you can't own that, we cannot go much further in coaching because you will never put up the boundaries to the conversations. You will never charge respectable prices that, that say, oh, that woman's a professional, right? She's good, right? Remember, our prices speak for us. And so you've got to have a story that you believe in. So I just want you to kind of marinate with that as we go through. Like, 
what are people paying big bucks and getting thrown off course for? Where are they learning the, the BS stuff? Where are they learning the, the shiny glittery and they're missing the foundational grit stuff? Where in your industry, in what you teach, are they are people like you going out there and learning stuff and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't bear it anymore, right? Like I just can't take people. That, that's what um, actually um, kind of inspired this uh, coaching thing. A lot of people think it's because I was selling the, uh, what is it called? Clients Cash and Empire Creation. The truth is that's already full and I'm still here, <laughs> right? And so I just wanted to, you know, it's, it's, it's a story I believe in. I know that uh, the way I teach coaches to make money is better than what people are learning elsewhere. It helps you make money right away. It changes how you show up. It changes how you're perceived. It changes your confidence in your own coaching. We change the woman, right? And then the woman uh, is different going to market and is is in a more, you know, is respected more, is taken advantage of less. I mean, these are the things that just naturally happen um, when, when you work with me. So the first thing is you got to have a story you believe in. What should people be doing with you by your side versus by anybody else's side? What should they learn from you? The second thing you need is a commitment to simple. It is super easy as a coach in particular to get caught up chasing shiny objects, trying to differentiate based on deliverables or platform or whatever. I cannot tell you the number of people who got caught. They just go off course trying to think about all the technology. And so they get stuck stopped and they lose their own magic and their own shine because they're so into the nitty gritty of like making it look a certain way. Right. I wrote a blog post that I'll put in the, um, in the, uh, the notes from this call, the workbook from this call. And, um, it talks about how I I've often gone down that, um, route of the perfectly polished Piper, you know, badge of honor or something. Right. And it always costs me. It always costs me because that's not my area of genius. To make money coaching, you have got to have a commitment to simple. Always, always the simple, right? So um, a lot of times people think that the reason oh, that, they had that people Michelle. are not buying their coaches, their coaching from them, they think that it's because um, they don't have a book or they don't have a funnel yet or <laughs> they don't have you know one more certification, right? And they think that's why people are ignoring them or ghosting them or taking up them up in one of their you know complimentary consults and then not buying. Like they think that's what it is and it's not. The bottom line is more than ever, people want simple directives. They want out of overwhelm. They want proven shortcuts. And the only thing they need to know from you is if you can help them, right? It's why I say that most powerful words that you can say to somebody in a consult is not some sales clothes somebody you know uh tried to get you to learn or you know whatever the magic words are i can help you with that my gosh people want to know that you can help them with whatever it is they're coming to you for right so that that's the bottom line they want to know that you can help them side note part of them trusting that you can help them is that you have strong fees Fees say I'm a professional, right? Professionals get paid. You know, the difference between like, you know, the um, the people who play baseball for a living and the people who play baseball for my church is, you know, the people who play baseball for a living get paid, <laughs> right? They expect to get paid. That means they show up for practice. That means that they, they show up with their A game, right? So um, part of pe getting people to trust you is charging them healthy, respectable fees. When you're constantly coaching people, and this is a biggie and, you know, it might make some people angry, but when you're, when you're constantly uh, coaching people for free um, and, you know, lots of bad things happen, I'll be really honest. Like, I just want to detail a few bad things that happen, right? So one is, which is probably the best bad thing that could happen, but no one really wants to take advantage of you, right? Like no one really takes, wants to take advantage of you. And so when you're not charging for your professional skills. Like the truth is they stop coming around. They stop asking because it's awkward for them to come to you. Most people just don't want to take advantage of you. I, you know, I tell the story often, but like my ex-boyfriend from high school is, you know, he does HVAC work, right? And there was a time when our, um, our HVAC system uh, really, it kind of, it really needed to be replaced. We live in a, a, a tourist area, so we couldn't replace it right when it needed to. So we needed some band-aids for like a few months 
months until we can <laughs> get them in here to replace our um, our HVAC system. And I was calling Danny, and, um, and but he never charged me. He would like come over and fix stuff, so, you know what I'm saying? And I kind of joked even, I was like, hey, you know, Chris is getting suspicious. Like you've got to charge us <laughs> for what you're doing here. But you know what? He never did. And he was trying to be nice. But the truth is then I stopped calling him because I didn't want him to do it for free. I never expected him to do it for free. He wouldn't take the money. So the first bad thing that um, that happens when you uh, coach people for free is they'll stop coming to you because there's an, a time when they get it. They're getting your professional work for free and it doesn't feel good to them. Another bad thing is they don't listen. They don't listen nearly as hard as they should. They don't give your expertise and your time and your mental real estate the, the attention that it deserves because they're not paying, right? Remember the $167 a month coach? That was me. Those people I was coaching were window shopping and didn't even pretend not to be when we were on a coaching call. That was infuriating as it should have been to me as a professional, right? And that was not them. That was me. That was my coaching fee that said, yeah, just talk to me while you're window shopping with your friends, right? Like that was, it was, it was horrible. But when you're coaching people for free, they're not listening the way they should be. And, you know, it's like, they don't call it paying attention for nothing, <laughs> right? Like we want them to pay so they can, uh, can pay attention. Another bad thing that happens when you coach people for free is they resent you. They resent you. It's almost like um, that person who wants to give um, parenting advice to every woman who has a, a big belly, <laughs> right? Like these are, this is not welcome advice, right? Nobody asked you. And I see a lot of people doing that in like Facebook groups, trying to like prove, earn the right to sell or trying to be like, let me see if I can prove to them that I'm the best coach or whatever. So they're constantly coaching people for free. People resent you for it. And then by God, if you do, you know, get the courage to actually say, this is a professional exchange, um, you know, what happens then is then they really resent you because now you've changed the rules on them, right? Like you were doing it for free and all of a sudden you want to get paid now, you know, now you've changed the rules on them. So because of all this stuff, right? Um, the worst thing that happens when you coach for free because of all of these things is that your confidence and your ability um, as a coach takes a hit. It's not just your income that takes a hit, right? Like when you can't get people to show up for free sessions, you lose your confidence in being able to get them to pay. And paying is often the way to get them to show up, right? So you've just got to, there's lots of bad things that happen when you're coaching people for free. And yet I see way too much of that going on. Remember, it is always noble to earn the sale. Always noble. That's a, that's an, that's a noble thing to do, to earn the sale. But you never want to find yourself earning the right to sell. There is a big difference. A lot of people who refuse to sell coaching, they, they put the, I don't know, like the carrot way out in front. I'll sell when I get my book published. I'll sell when I get X number of followers. I'll sell when this happens. I'll sell when I get certified. I'll sell when I get certified again. I'll sell, you know, and it's like all this different stuff and they're earning the right to sell. Stop that. Earn their trust, earn the sale itself. You don't need to earn the right to sell. You need nothing more than what you have now. And I don't care if you're certified. And by the way, neither does anybody else. I mean, I'm okay if you're certified. Like it's not like I won't coach people who are certified, but like the only, I honestly, I think I've had two people ask me if I was certified as a coach. And like one of them was a straight up like competitor, <laughs> you know, early on, like just trying to like, you know, feel me out or whatever. And, um, and I forget the reason somebody else that maybe they were genuinely curious. I don't know, but, um, but what people really care about is whether or not you can help them. So this, um, this kind of, uh, goes into, um, the, the next thing actually that you need. So remember the first thing you need to make six figures minimum as in coaching income alone is a story you believe in, a story you can get behind. The next is a commitment to simple. And uh, we talked about some of the, the ways that charging, um, you know, not charging for coaching can really work against you. The core of that being you lose confidence in your own abilities. But the third thing you need is boundaries around conversations, boundaries around conversations. We'll talk more about this later um, in the, you know, in this, 
this presentation, but uh, coaching is selling mental real estate and access to you. It's different than selling like a physical uh, product um, or even a done for you service, right? So boundaries around conversations, you've got to own your own value. You've got to feel, believe that there's tremendous value in what you have to offer as a partner, as a thinking partner, as a coach, as a side-by-side, -side, right? And you've got to have really clear boundaries around access to your mental real estate. We're going to talk about that um, you know, free to fee line later on, right? It's very, very important um, to have those, you know, those boundaries up. And again, it's not just saying, it's not like, you know, protecting you, it's really protecting them, right? It's protecting them because when they don't pay, they don't get the results that, that they need. You know, there's lots of bad, all those bad things happen. So what do you need? You need a commitment to simple, you need boundaries around conversations and you need a story that you can believe in. So for anybody in the, uh, clients cash and empire creation. I'm definitely going to help you um, with that. Some of you I already have like identifying what is that story? Why should people come to you for at whatever kind of coaching you do rather than any other option they have available to them, right? If you can't own it, they won't believe it. So let's move on. So 2020 was interesting in like all the ways, right? Um, I am not, I'm not beginning to cover all the ways 2020 came in. Um, I mainly want to focus on the pandemic and the panic around the pandemic and how that um, in and of itself um, changed the coaching game, right? And so one, it, you know, in a nutshell, it brought a lot of people home, right? And, um, and it also cut off a lot of income streams for highly paid professionals, right? It really did. It made previously secure professions, and I'm talking doctors, lawyers, you know, like it made those professions less secure. That changed a lot in our industry. It really did. Um, I, I forgot what you don't need. You don't need in order to make six figures in income uh, or seven figures in income, really. But like, you don't need like a book, unless you're teaching people to publish one, right? So there's a recent, and we, uh, Alicia, um, Alicia's here, I think. Um, anyway, so there's a book person who was selling like, I don't know, like Kindle Riches or whatever. And it was like nine $9,997 for his like coaching program and, you know, whatever. And it caught my attention. And so, you know me, right? Like I go to Kindle, I go to Amazon and I like look up this guy, not a book not one, not one book. And he's teaching people. So like, unless you're teaching people how to publish, <laughs> you don't actually um, need a book. It's not unlike um, this lady. And I think it was 2008. At that time, I was already making $10,000 a month on my, the coaching gym. Cause I was super creative with my name. And, um, and so, but I felt that I was getting caught in that, like, maybe I should formalize it. Maybe I should make it fancier. Maybe have like a membership site, like all these things back then. And so this woman pops up and she's going to, she's teaching how to make money with your membership um, program. Right. And so I set up a call with one of her like coaches, i.e. employees, I, you know, set up a call with that. And so my, I only had one question because I was sold. I was ready back then. Nobody was teaching this stuff and I had been doing it effectively and profitably for a while. So I had to, you know, I, I wanted a mentor. And so I was pretty much sold, but I had one question, right? And I thought I just had missed it because I was aloof or something, but I couldn't find out where this woman had a membership program. <laughs> so I asked her coach and, you know, the coaches she set me up with the, like the sales call. And I said, yeah, I said, like, I'm in, like, I'm in, I just want to know, like, where are her uh, membership programs? I didn't see them on the site and with no shame whatsoever, the woman says, oh, she doesn't have any membership programs. And I, I'm thinking I'm on the call with the wrong person. No. Right. And as I say this, I want you to understand that there are people paying good money to other people who have not done and don't know what you do, right? Like, so I was baffled by this. I was baffled. And of course, since that time, I've seen it over and over and over again. But you don't need a book unless you're selling how to publish books. You don't need a um, certification unless that's, you know, important to you or, or um, you know, elite, you're legally bound by something like that, right? Um, so you don't need anything other than the three things that I outlined above, right? So 
I'm going to help my um, coaching program mentees design their offers, right? Their core pieces of cornerstone content. That's pretty critical. I um, have some solid funnels for evergreen income. Um, but in truth, you can make six figures of income with little more than email, phone, and those three things that I made earlier, right? It's kind of like, was it Frank Sinatra that said, if you need more than a stage and a microphone, like you're a poser, right? <laughs> like you don't need all these extras. You've got to be willing. You're, you're charging for access to you. And so you have got to be willing at a certain point to stand tall and say, I'm worth being paid for my my time and access to me, right? If you don't get that right, you have all the bells and whistles. And I promise you, I've seen a million times, you are still gonna have a problem selling coaching, no matter how fancy you get with all the other stuff. So you can get those things later. I'm doing those things now, um, but always on the back end, right? Of like me just showing up and being me, always kind of cleaning it up on the back end. But you don't need those things to break your first six figures in coaching, um, coaching income. Remember why people pay for coaching? They want something, right? Something that you have. So they want to earn something or they want to feel something or they want to do something, right? And they want to do it with you. That's why they pay for coaching. All right, I'm going to move into the challenges um, and opportunities ushered in by the gift of 2020, <laughs> uh, right? So we're going to go uh, right into that. So the first thing is pandemic-related homecomings. Pandemic-related homecomings, right? This really ushered in. How many times, I mean, for people who've been around a while, I have said these words, which came back to bite me. By the way, I'm never joking about anything again. All of my jokes come true. And so like way back in the day, I would say like, hey guys, look, the world's not going to stop spinning for you to grow your coaching business. That you know, The world's not going to come to a halt to make sure you can write your book in 30 days. None of that's happening. So you got to fit it in, right? Well, lo and behold, you know, 2020 came and the world did stop spinning. <laughs> Everything came to a pause, right? But what that means is like, there's more time. People all of a sudden are looking into um, starting that hobby or starting that business or getting into shape, right? Like it's ushering in. People have more time to start dreaming and scheming again, right? So it's opening up new avenues of thought for people. Um, the result of this Un one bad result, I guess, not really a bad result because it doesn't matter, but it, more competition, right? I've never seen more uh, coaching certification programs come through. Like I've never seen more of that. And um, and so, but it's, it's the competition is nothing for you to worry about because very few people really know how to build a profitable, thriving and sustainable coaching practice. I will tell you, there's one thing that 2020 ushered in that we do need to worry about. We need to be aware of, but it's not the competition coming in, right? Um, but it, it the, the result of this pandemic homecoming is also more opportunity. Um, people are hiring health coaches, career coaches, productivity coaches, educational coaches, business coaches at unprecedented um, at rates. It, the people are hiring that largely because as a lot of people came home, typical options that they used to rely on, like going to the gym, going to YMCA classes, whatever, were not available or were not convenient anymore, right? So the result of the pandemic, like homecoming, you know, people have more time. They're having more things to focus on. They need more support than ever. And their typical support options maybe weren't as available. Um, and I've seen some crazy cool opportunities come about through, um, through the, you know, pandemic related stuff. Like one is um, for landscapers, right? So like, you know, landscapers, like the dirtiest, sweatiest, least profitable part of their job, right? Is, um, is actually doing the work, right? Like, you know, shoveling it all out and planting the stuff and putting in the mulch and all of that. But more and more people are home. And so what I'm seeing a change in that industry is basically like landscape coaches where people, you know, design based on, you know, soil samples and stuff like that, what, um, you know, what um, plants would work well for them and, um, and then actually designing it out and the people are home. So they do it themselves, right? It's just a cool little, you know, opportunity I've seen, but the first challenge opportunity is pandemic related homecomings, right? So I want you to kind of think about how that might affect um, your industry. And also, if you have any questions, you can um, put them in the chat. 
and I'll get to them sometime. Um, another pandemic related uh, change is there, like I said before, there were challenges to incomes previously thought impervious to market downturns, right? This led to the emergence of the six-figure part-time coach. So think about the industries that if you were to, let's say, be looking for somebody who made a lot of money, right? Like, you know, like as a friend, as a partner, like whatever, right? Um, there are certain industries that you feel like make a lot of money, plastic surgeons, bariatric surgeons, estheticians, attorneys, veterinarians, right? And what happens, all of these professions where you expect a certain level of income, with the stroke of a governor's pen, it went away for months, months. All of a sudden, you couldn't do plastic surgery anymore. You couldn't. You couldn't pay any amount of money for it anymore. You couldn't do eye surgeries anymore because I have a an eye condition. So, you know, um, there's you know there's a whole market around it. I think it's a largely BS, um, but you know, still like all those things stopped. Right, the stroke of the governor's pen and and doctors across many many states were like, <laughs> what? Like I can't make any money. Attorneys courts were shut down. In-person meetings were outlawed. These are, these are jobs. Like you become an attorney, you kind of expect to make good money for the rest of your life. Right. But what happened was all of these uh, people, they didn't just pout, <laughs> right? Like they pivoted, right? We saw weight loss coaching by doctors. We saw, uh, um, um, what are they called? Plastic surgeons become skin consultants, right? I paid my own hair lady to coach me through doing my own roots. How's that for insult to injury, right? Um, we have attorneys coaching people through co-parenting to avoid court. Why? Because all of a sudden attorneys couldn't make money being in court, right? Um, we saw attorneys um, e-coaching clients through immigration services. We saw chiropractors coaching people through back strengthening programs and immune building programs. We saw veterinarians opening up nutrition consults, right? Because what happened was all of these professions that previously depended on multi six figures, all of a sudden got chopped off at the freaking knees. And so this created an emergence of a lot of part-time, very specific niche-based coaches. I just want to say um, and I've said it a long time, it's not new and it's not related to anything recent, uh, but if you are in a highly regulated industry, um, you're at risk. I don't know how else to say it, right? Like you're at risk. Um, somebody can complain, um, you know, you could lose your license to practice. There's lots of things that can happen in, in a highly um, regulated industry. And a lot of those things did in fact happen. And so I'm seeing a lot of people want to hedge their bets, right? So um, they create coaching income based on their expertise, because if they move, let's just say they want to move and they're not licensed in that other area, they can still uh, make money. So that's another challenge and opportunity. It's mainly opportunity. I love it. I love it. Um, and so all of this is being fueled by the most exciting part, which is increased demand for and acceptance of coaching and other virtual services, right? People in generations who previously would have never seen a doctor online or done some sort of consult online are experts now. Like my Mima can get on a Zoom call, right? Like she'll still sign all of her Facebook posts, like love Mima or <laughs> something like that, right? But she can hop on a Zoom call and does. Um, and it's also becoming a lot more accepted. Remember, you know, I've been in this business a long time. So I remember actually buying those um, CDs that um, were uh, call center sounds, right? Like just like noise, just nasty noise um, to, to hide the fact that I was working from home because working from home was viewed at, with suspicion, right? So, uh, but now there's like this increased, um, you know, uh, demand and acceptance for professionals working virtually. This is a huge trend. Um, the only, the only, there's a couple things that I've seen that I, um, I want to, I guess, warn you about, I guess I it would be the best thing. It's not to be overly concerned with, um, but it is something that I have to address. So one of the most concerning trends I've seen um, in, you know, in the pandemic 
you know, stuff with people coming home, people are looking at starting side hustles, things like that is an increased awareness of and focused on like super coaches, right? So, um, you know, there's a lot more marketing to coaches from schools, like teaching you how to coach, right? Certifying you to promising you a bunch of money or whatever. Um, but it's, it's, as we focus on, when I say super coaches, like air quotes, and I have a, I'm, I'm going to say a name that I have a phenomenal, great deal of respect for, right? So like Gary Vaynerchuk, right? But you're looking at these people and the, the dangerous part of this trend is it takes us away from serving people. We start to focus on trying to be, you know, uh, polarizing on on Twitter or try to try to, you know, do what they do and have as many videos as they have. And, you know, try to have that like mean demeanor or whatever it is, right? Like we, these super coaches, they're building entirely different businesses. Long story short, guys, these people, I know them, they are not spending their days coaching. They're spending their days doing stuff that I wouldn't want to do. They're managing huge teams of people, tons of projects and management. That to me is a nightmare. If that's for you, do it. But the, the, the trend is that we're focusing on that. They're calling themselves coaches. They're selling educational programs and it's leading coaches astray, right? It leaves a huge, real and simple gaping hole where most coaching money will be made, right? Which is the, the true coach, right? The quiet success stories. Um, most of these are more impressive and actually more profitable. Like I've long said, um, as the super coach thing began to emerge, like I've long said in public on stages where all these, you know, of some of these super coaches are, I will stack my profit against them most any day because they have this massive train and overhead and they're building something different, not really a coaching, um, a, a coaching business. So while most of the focus and marketing and visible examples are of what I'm calling these super coaches, not because they're super, <laughs> but because they're, they're big is they're not really coaches at all with their teaching coaches actually uh, takes a long time to build. Um, and it's a lot of investment on behalf of the coach, right? So uh, one of the warnings I talk about, like if your coach, if it's a business coach, obviously so some other coach, like obviously I wouldn't expect them to ask this, but if your coach is not asking you to how much money you're making or, you know, how many people you're pitching, if they're not assessing the health of your business, right? Like you need to run, but there's a lot of programs that don't because they'd rather keep you feeling good and productive and pretty in your little forms and all that stuff than to say, is it working for you? Are you having an impact in the industry by people who pay and trust you, right? So uh, just a side note, so for new people. So if you're working with somebody who's not asking you about the money you're making and tolerating you not making any money or not increasing your money, then, you know, the they're probably not the best business coach um, because business, you know, income is how we keep score in business, right? And it's not so much about like making more than her or making more than him. It's about living the life that you want. It's about having your income reflect the value that you bring to the world. Isn't that what we all want, right? We want our, we want our, that our income to mirror that the difference that we're making um, in, in the industry. So if I'm proof of nothing else, um, other than you don't have to be famous or showy to create real success in this industry, that the numbers that matter are the people who trust you and keep trusting you to impact them. If I'm proof of nothing else, then, you know, I want you to take me as proof of that, right? Because it's, it's a, it's a huge, um, huge difference there. So I do want to, um, I do want you to kind of think through some stuff. If you want to put a comment in, that's fine. And if you don't, that's fine too. But um, I want you to think of how many people you'd need um, to buy from you in order to make $100,000 in a year, right? Like, just think about that, right? And I, I always like to uh, come up with like income schemes, right? So like, um, so play with your numbers. Like this is kind of an exercise for you, like play with your numbers. So like, you know, may, what would you, what could you sell um, if you needed to make $100,000 in the next year to 100 people or to 50 people. So as an example, a few of my own six-figure income streams, right? 
So in this year, I actually dropped um, this one, but for years I made a hundred thousand dollars, my VIP days alone, right? I did 40 VIP days um, a year. It was, I did them in four seasons. So 10 a season, they were $2,500 um, up front. That's a hundred thousand dollars right there. Do you know 40 people who could maybe pay you $2,500 for maybe even a year long program or what have you, right? This hundred thousand um, dollars. And one of the things that I used to do um, would be a blueprint. Like maybe you could do a, a blueprint for someone. I sold those for $2,500. I'd only need 40 to make $100,000 on that. What if you had for, for particularly attorneys, doctors, but any of us, what if you had 50 clients that paid you $2,000 a year? What is that broken down by the month, right? And just trying to say how easy it can be, right? When you play with these numbers, you don't need like a list of 50,000 people or even 100,000 or even 50, you know, 25,000 people on your list in order to make $100,000, you'll need a list at all, right? So like, can you find 50 people who want access to you to pay $2,000 um, a year? Um, are there 100 families that um, want to ace that home study for their custody dispute, right? I assure you there are. I used to do that on my Anything for Money tour. Um, but it was, you know, you could do $997. It could be a group program led by an attorney. That would fly off the shelves, right? The options to make $100,000 are endless. That's why, you know, but I just want you to play with it. Like, what would your numbers look like? Can you see 40 people paying you $2,500 for what? right? Like, or 50 people paying 2000 or, um, you know, a hundred people paying you 1000, what would they pay for? Just kind of play with that. Right. Um, another trend, um, that is a little bit concerning. Um, and it, it goes back to you having boundaries around conversations and owning your story. Um, but another trend is like what I'm calling pseudo coaching alternatives being offered for free, right? Like it's like the Facebook group groups calling themselves masterminds. And this is coming straight out. All these trends are intertangled. Like this is coming straight out of these new coaching schools, coaching people how to coach. And then they come out there and they have the, they're coaching masterminds that they're all free. And it's like, it just gets all convoluted and it makes our work, um, actually, it allows us to set ourselves apart by our boundaries, right? Because there are Facebook, Facebook groups calling themselves masterminds, free sessions masquerading as coaching, like all of these new coaches that are doing all these things for free, they're earning the right to one day sell coaching, um, you know, when they're famous enough or when their books published or whatever, like all of this is a little bit of an issue, but the solution the solution for us is to operate as a professional with personal boundaries. So it'll immediately set you apart. And remember why people hire coaches. It is because they want something. They want a simplified directive. They want to, to have somebody they trust walk through this process with them, right? And they're willing to pay for it. So when all of these pseudo coaching alternatives are out there and you're like, you know what, like, I, I, I can't not charge you when X number of people are paying me. It's not, it's out of integrity for me. And so if you want this, here's what, here's what we can do. Right. So the solution really is to operate as a professional. Um, you know, when I first started coaching, my kids were uh, very small. It wasn't my first business. Right. Um, uh, so when I first started coaching, um, I looked like a big shot. Because I was like, you know, I, I looked through my calendar to find time to coach you. I didn't have a sitter, <laughs> right? So like I could, I, I had to like find time to fit you in during like nap time and, you know, all this stuff and around appointments, but it looked like I had all this demand for my work, but really I just had these boundaries. I had no way around, right? It was really such a great thing for me because all these other coaches back then were scrambling to be convenient and I couldn't because I didn't have a sitter and I really didn't want one, right? I wanted to be there with my kids. And so, um, you know, I, I started this, I had this little reputation for being in this, you know, high demand, but really it was just so limited time. My boundaries had to be hard and firm, but I'm tell you, it is how I grew fast as a coach by having those firm boundaries. I immediately was positioned against coaches who are willing to do backflips to try to get you to pay them. And here's the deal. When somebody is looking to hire a coach, the cheap option is not going to be what they want. Somebody who wants to hire a coach, they want results and they distrust cheap and they distrust free even more, right? It's why I had to say, um, you know, about this, like the, the group's 
the group's filled, <laughs> right? So like, don't worry about me selling you on this call, right? It's a, it's a free call. So um, anyway, so the solution to all these pseudo coaching alternatives is to have those um, boundaries. Let's get into what you really want to know, the how to package access, how to package coaching, right? Because um, you're really packaging access to you, hence the need for boundaries, right? To make consistent money. So you want to make sure that you have identified um, what people should be learning from you, what people should be partnering with you on and why, why you over any other option out there, right? We should be able to rattle this off, like trippingly off the tongue. We should be able to say why people should work with us over any and every other option out there. And it better not be because I'm cheaper because that's not what people look for in a coach, right? A lot of times people uh, will actually reduce their fees and get way less people saying yes, right? So as an example, if I am facing cancer, right? I don't want the $97 coach. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I want the Mac daddy coach. I want the coach who says, Hey, I've been there. I want, I can help you. Here's what we need to do. Right. I'm when I'm afraid, whether it's about my finances or my health or my marriage or anything else, I want somebody who's going to say, you know what? A lot of cheaper options out there, but I've got you. I can help you with this right? Because they're always, regardless of the industry you're coaching, education, it doesn't matter. Regardless of the in person you're coaching, they are going to borrow and stand on your confidence and your sense of self as they, you know, clarify their own, right? So, um, so anyway, so what should people be learning from you rather than any other option in order to package coaching? And by the way, you might not even say this on your sales page or in your proposal language, you just got to know it. You got to own it. You got to be able to have it go off, you know, like I said, tripling off the tongue in a conversation, right? So when you're packaging coaching, you always want to package according to the difference it makes, not the time it takes, <laughs> the difference it makes. So one of the things that drives me freaking nuts with coaches is when I see this proposal and you've written it out and you act like it's, you know, the focus is on like the 45 minute session, right? Like, and so you want to specify how much time it takes. Frankly, if we could get done in 15, that's my preference, <laughs> right? Like I don't stretch it out for 45 minutes. I never guarantee how long somebody is going to be on the phone with me because it does not matter, right? So for, as an example, for the, um, for the, the mentorship coming up, everybody gets a blueprint from me where I'm going to blueprint out their business. But, and so we set up for, for scheduling purposes, we schedule two hours, right? And so, but if we're done in an hour and a half, good news, we're done in an hour and a half, right? Like go enjoy your half hour. And also side note, I have had times when I'm like, we didn't get enough done. Let's schedule another two hours and they don't pay extra for that, right? It's not about the time it takes. It's about the difference it makes. This means when you package, you cannot package by the time four hyphen 45 minute sessions with me on the phone. That's the wrong way to go. Nobody cares. You package according to the difference it makes. You package according to the goal. You package according to the promise, right? And then the time it takes, frankly, shouldn't even really be discussed until payments come because that's really a scheduling issue. <laughs> the time it takes is never a marketing issue. I filled this program, the coaching thing in a couple days. Um, without ever marketing it as an aside, right? Like to the outside people, um, just by invite only. And nobody asked how long they have to be on the phone with me for the blueprint, right? Like after they pay, then as a scheduling issue, we decide, you know, we, we like, you know, um, you know, schedule off that time, right? So what should people be learning for you? Package according to the difference it makes, not according to how long it takes. And you've got to understand that conversations equal cash. That's how you sell coaching, right? Um, you need to have conversations. So um, when somebody is saying, I need money now, my first thing is not, let's design a webinar and a funnel and none of that. If you need money now, if you're serious about getting coaching money in the door, then the first thing you've got to do is schedule coaching conversations. 
You've got to schedule these conversations. Now, most people are trying desperately to fill their free consult calendar. And that is really, I want to tell you how to use the free consults because this is something I'll cover in much more detail um, with my group. But here are the general parameters. Most people use free coaching sessions all wrong. It actually erodes their professionalism. Everybody knows it's like a, a thinly veiled sales session and they resent it and it builds sales resistance. So you're having these freebie conversations and everybody's just waiting for the sale, right? Like, and so here are the parameters for how to use these free consults to fill your calendar with conversations, coaching conversations. Parameter one, it is not free for everybody. If it's free for everybody, it's of zero value to most people, right? So free for everybody is done. One practical thing that means is you got to take that crap off your website, right? Where anybody and everybody can schedule time with you. That is not a good boundary issue, right? Like, you know, they can schedule time with you. What are you talking about? I don't know if I want to spend time with you. And what if I can't help you, right? So it's not free for everybody anymore. If you're using free consults to sell coaching, which is the fastest, best way to sell coaching, um, if you're using free consults, it's got to be like, here's what I used to say. I would say, um, I have serving hours that are dedicated, you know, that I do every week. And um, it's a way to give back to my community. And this month I'm dedicating my coaching hours to, right? And then you insert, right? Like, so it can be to members of a particular association. That was my thing. Like I did, um, I did this for uh, coaching associations, <laughs> right? It's like, I, it was, it was like really easy money, you know, because I said, you you can give this to them. Like you can give it to new members. You can give it to members who are signing up, like, you know, or re-upping for membership. And um, so I'm dedicating um, this month's serving hours to, uh, to coaches in Georgia. And so in, you know, here's how you can sign up. And so they knew it had value. They knew that it was just for their people. And, and I meant it, right? It wasn't like BS, right? It was, it was actually what I did. And I promised them no selling. So parameter one is know who you're serving. Like, if, you know, know your target. It can, it can definitely be a target that you help, right? Like, you know, but you, you can just find a way. Like, so it's like, I'm dedicating serving hours to people this month who maybe um, have a book kind of outlined in their mind, but they haven't put pen to paper yet. Or I'm dedicating um, these serving hours to people who are currently facing a really scary health diagnosis, right? Um, whether it's autoimmune or cancer or whatever, I'm dedicating these serving hours to women who have low desire um, in the bedroom, whatever it is, right? So you just wanna make sure that it's not free for everyone. That's the first parameter. Number two, there's some investment up front. Remember, you know, we don't, investment isn't always money, right? So like when I did my serving hours, um, I had people fill out a questionnaire and I was very clear. I'm like, if, you know, I want to come to this call most prepared to serve you. And so if you don't have, you know, I need this question. It was very simple, right? If, if the questionnaire is not filled out and given to me within 24 hours of our appointment, the, the appointment will be scheduled and given to somebody on their wait list, period. And I meant it and I did it, right? I required some sort of investment because why should I do all the investing? Co coaching is a partnership. Do they really want help? If so, they'll fill out a four question questionnaire, right? Um, and I did not show up if they didn't. The number three, the parameter for number three is um, no selling during your, uh, your selling conversations, right? No selling. And that actually meant when somebody says, oh my God, I want to work with you. I would say, you know what? We still have several, we still have a lot more time left on this call. Let's see how far we can get right? Um, how much are your services? I would say, you know what? I promise no selling on this call. And when I, what I can further promise you is if you want to work with me, I can follow up with you via email. One, I don't like to sell on the phone, right? So I didn't. Um, so I sold on, on email, but I would say, you know, let's put that aside because we still have time left here. You know, let's see how far we can get. I didn't leave you know, the way most coaching schools teach you to sell is just so horrific and so ineffective. They teach you to have these free consultations. And then the whole time you're kind of thinking like, you know, how am I going to, you know, what, what am I going to sell them on? What package is best? You're trying to figure out like, you know, maybe what kind of job they have or how, you know what I'm saying? Like you're, all these things are going on in your mind. And then at the end, you're, you put on your selling hat, it feels awkward and clunky. And you're trying to go through like, you know, all the different 
you know, highlights of your coaching. And, and what happens in that is the best selling conversations leave your prospect in possibility, right? In the possibility. But if you sell at the end of these free consultations, it leaves them considering affordability, right? It's just the wrong mindset. It's the wrong mindset. Plus, everybody knows coaches do these free consults to sell you. So selling resistance is an all-time high on these coaching calls. So, uh, so no selling immediately. You know what happens? It flips the script. When they realize you're not going to sell them on the phone, they go into a different mindset. Pro you promise you'll email me. You promise you'll email me ways we can work together. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. You, you coached your heart out to the very end. I'm so sorry. You've got to cut this off. I promise you I'll follow up via email. And then you go on to the next call. Right. And then you follow up powerfully by email. So, uh, one that, you know, to schedule these, they're not free for everybody. Second parameter is some investment up front, questionnaire, whatever. Three, no selling because sales resistance is too far up and you want to leave them in, you know, considering all the possibilities of working with you, not the affordability. And four, um, when you don't sell during those freebie sessions, it allows you to follow up with a prescriptive sale, right? Where you are prescribing next steps for them versus like going through the options. And um, for all of my um, people, I'm going to send you a you know, like several examples of my own sales um, emails, right? So like, it's like based on what we talked about, here are some options. Here's the one I recommend because of blankety blank. Then it's really a cut and paste um, form email. So, um, all right, so we're gonna move on. The, um, the main hurdle for packaging coaching is owning your value. That's the main hurdle. Like you should have a conviction that they should be paying you for X, right? And you know why it helps them to pay is they get better results, right? When they pay, they get better results. Like you, I mean, frankly, I, I believe that it doesn't matter what trainer, let's just say like personal trainer you work with, um, if you pay them more, well, one, you don't skip out on training sessions, number one, right? If you pay them more, then you show up, you bring a different energy, right? Like, you know, if you're paying them $1,200 a month, by God, you want to get these results in three months, not 13, <laughs> because, you know, it's just a practical thing, right? So, um, so you know, you, the main hurdle for all coaches is owning their value. And, um, and I definitely, I can, I can definitely help you with that. It's, um, it is one of my superpowers, right? Um, so, and the reason you want them to pay is not because you need a new pair of shoes or whatever. It's because um, they get better results. Your confidence grows as a coach because your people are, are, are getting the results that you promise. Um, so let's talk about that free to fee line, right? The free to fee line. This is not about generosity. This is not about helping a certain market during a certain period of time. The free to fee line is an integrity issue. That's all it is. It's an integrity issue. How would you feel if you were paying me, you know, $2,500 a month and you realize that I was giving it away to somebody, right? Like you would be offended by that. You would feel frustrated by that. It, it would call into question my integrity and it should, right? And it should. So you're free to feline. It doesn't have to be prescribed by me, although you know, when I work with you, I will let you know where I feel like it should be, right? But it's really about integrity with your paying people. Frankly, maybe you're on this call, you're watching this replay, and you don't have a coaching client yet. You don't have your very first coaching client. But you know what? If you've even pitched, if you've even pitched coaching to somebody at a certain fee, and even if they ghosted you and never came back, it's out of integrity for you to agree for any reason to coach people for free right? It does them a disservice, particularly if it's a real big issue, right? Like custody, cancer, um, you know, a, a marriage issue, a financial issue, right? They deserve a professional to show up and charge them. So you're free to feline. I want you to understand is an integrity issue. Most people think they've got to be seen as the nice girl, as a generous girl in a market in order to win the right to sell. And it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. You've got to be integrity in, in integrity with the people that you serve. I would be mortified. I would be, I feel hugely bad about myself. If anybody found out, like honestly, with women who wow, like all doors lead to women who wow, 
you don't get to me through any other door but women who wow, right? But honest to God, my best friends are not in women who wow unless they pay. Seriously. And now we might be walking and talking and I'm coaching as we walk and talk, you know what I'm saying? But they're not getting women. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to play it. It's an integrity issue for me. So you're free to feline. I, you know, I can help you if you're in the program. I can help you decide what that is. But if I, you and I never talk again, you've just got to decide where it is. And you've got to hold that line as an issue of your own integrity, right? Once you charge or even pitch someone, it does become an issue of your integrity because why would you give to, you know, like give it away to some people and then charge other people? It is, it's outlandish to even consider it. Um, so then I want to talk about groups versus individual coaching when you're packaging your coaching, right? So the biggest mistake I see people make is they have a hard time selling coaching. By the way, the only reason you have a hard time selling coaching is you haven't act, you haven't packaged it well and you're not owning your full value and you're somehow giving away access for free. If you have a hard time selling coaching, those things are at play. I promise you, I'm not wrong. Those things are at play. You are either not fully owning the power of coaching itself because you're a doctor or a lawyer or whatever, or you're not owning the value that you bring in your own experience and expertise or you're giving it away for free, right? And so if you're having a hard time selling coaching, one of those things are at play, no question whatsoever. But what I, one of the biggest mistakes I see people make is they start to think about doing group coaching because they think I'm having a hard time selling individual coaching. Maybe it's too expensive. I'll sell group coaching and it'll be cheaper, right? Well, it's just the wrong way to go. In general, you want your coaching, you know, you want to be seduced into group programs, right? Meaning you filled your coaching practice. I mean, my, I was full, I was a full coaching practice at five people, right? So don't be super impressed by me <laughs> when I said I had a full practice or a waiting list, right? I was full at five people, but, um, but, you know, when you build up as I, as I would recommend your one-on-one -on -one coaching, to where you just don't want any more one-on-one, -on -one, then naturally your power and your passion and your intention will go behind a group program because it just makes sense. You're just not meeting with anybody else one-to-one, -one, right? So you don't want to fall into that trap of thinking I'll sell a group program because I don't think anybody can afford. That's not true. I have seen people um, sell uh family heirlooms to afford coaching. I have seen people um, sell their plasma to afford coaching, right? Like I've seen all sorts of things, like people afford what they want to afford, right? That's the, that's the truth of the matter, right? You can always, they can always afford what they want to afford. And this is coming from a woman who, you know, I know what it is to not be able to afford contact solution and use water instead, right? Like if I told you I couldn't afford something, I meant it. Right. And yet I still had the thing, you know, I still had my hair done, <laughs> right? Like I still had the things that mattered to me done, even if I was using water um, for contact lens solutions. So avoid trying to do the co group coaching thing because it might be cheaper for them. Really build your one on one because it's the easiest and fastest way to get your income up and to see your impact as a coach and to fall in love. Um, with the coaching industry. And when you focus there first, the group programs, you know, when I talked earlier about the super coaches um, that people are looking at and we feel like the, the, the main damage, I think of that whole thing is that it convinces coaches that they've got to do a bunch of these things in order to get paid up here, right? They start to, um, you know, we start to do all, all manner of things other than actually coaching, owning our value, all of that stuff. And, um, and the, the danger in that is that it takes us off course. Like we have to earn the right, um, we have to earn the right to sell. And we start to, um, we, we, the better way is you sell coaching. And as you're selling coaching and making an impact in people's lives, as you do that, what happens is your brand grows as a natural result, not because you paid, not because you, you know, did all this other stuff, because you are impacting people and they're telling other people, right? And they're bringing their friends 
this is what happens when you go and you focus on, you know, impacting people one at a time. There's a couple ways to go. You can go the super coach route and you can pay, 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 pay. And then you're really not impacting anybody because all you're doing is listening to your own voice out there. Nobody's really listening. You're not really coaching anybody. All of a sudden you're spending your days not coaching, but like building a team or putting all the dots together or whatever, right? And then hopefully, maybe one day when you get there, you can, you know, get the courage to charge somebody or you can do it from the beginning. You can make money while you build your brand. You can start impacting people and changing lives while you're making money and building this business, right? So um, anyway, I'm going to step off of that um, little thing for just a second because we're running out of time. But I do want to talk a little bit and please put your questions in if you have something specific that you want to cover. You can do it. Um, by tagging me directly or and if you do that directly i won't say your name or you can do it to everybody where anybody can see um your your um questions so please put your questions in but i want to talk about the day in the life of a six and seven figure coach right um because the names that we know like a gary vaynerchuk or whatever um versus the under the radar coaches um making crazy money on our own terms you know the the big difference is the um we spend our days coaching and they are spending their days doing all manner of other things, managing teams, projects, details, et cetera, et cetera. But for a day in the life of, the, of a six and seven figure coach, like I literally will, um, if, it, if a day is um, nice, right? Like I will hike probably five miles um, nearly every day um, when the weather is nice, right? I've got morning time with my husband every single morning. Like we, now we work from home. So um, even, even longer bits of, of in, in the morning, I can pick up and go and, um, you know, be with my son who's at, at college um, on really any day except the first and third Thursday <laughs> of every month because I meet with my Women Who Wow members that day. Uh, but that you know, the day in the life uh, when you build your business around your core expertise and you charge what you know you should be charging and you're focusing on impacting people, then you're not chained to your desk. You're not chained to creating a whole bunch of content and making and, and then paying a bunch of people to make it fancy or anything like that. Like you build your business on daily and weekly habits. Right. So um, you want to make sure that you are building um, your business on fuel that fuels you. Right. So I just uh, met with someone recently and um, and what we've done in her business, she loves to read the paper like honestly loves to read the paper. She reads multiple papers in the morning. And so we've literally built her business. Um, to um, $800,000 a year. Um, and what she does is she doesn't like create her own content. She responds to big news stories. That is her marketing is, does she blog? No, she doesn't blog and she doesn't do videos. Um, she just has a small email list and that's where the 800,000, 800 plus thousand um, dollars comes from, right? So she fuels her business doing what she already loves to do. So how do you know what your schedule should be, right? To build your six and seven figure, um, you know, your six and seven figure practice. Like the first thing is you want to make sure that you are scheduling these um, conversations, right? You want to make sure you're scheduling these conversations, but the most detrimental thing to have is too much time, too much time. Like um, I met with one of our um, people in that coaching group and I said, well, what are your, you know, what are your like actual work hours? And she panicked me at first because she said nine to four. And I'm like, mm, that's too much time. It's too much time. She's not, she's not making enough money to be at that desk nine to four, <laughs> right? Like, so I'm like, well, let's, we're going to talk about nine to 11 and two to four. That's what we're doing, right? Because too much time as a new coach can be detrimental, right? Hence, the emerging trend of the part-time six-figure coach because they had the advantage that I had. Um, my advantage was I had three kids I had to care for, right? And so my time was naturally limited. And therefore, when something is limited, it becomes more valuable in the marketplace, right? And so that's why it seems like these doctors, these chiropractors, these attorneys who are coming on the scene and they're all of a sudden having these six-year practices. It's also, it's not just because they're doctors or attorneys. I work with a ton of women who are multi-six-figure earners uh, who aren't any of those things and maybe didn't graduate from college and all that stuff. But the, the uh, 
that the real uh, thing there is that they have limited time. So what should your day and week look like? It's, you should have daily habits and weekly habits. If you're building a coaching income, you've got to have your calendar filled with coaching um, sessions, right? One-time coaching sessions. You've got to do that. Remember, I gave you the parameters of that er earlier, um, but um, you can't have it on your website open free to everybody. You can't have it open at any time. Have your boundaries. Set your boundaries around how you want to live your life. Like as an example, you know, I don't have appointments on Mondays or Fridays, right? Like that's just, I just don't, you know, because I might want to take off. Um, I generally don't have any calls before 11 a.m. Why? I like my mornings to be my own. That's what I like, right? Uh, I don't do late afternoon appointments. Why? Because it, when I was growing this, um, now my, my husband's a public school teacher. So, um, you know, he was home at like 4.15. And so, um, and I had to do my 15 minute, like, straighten up the house <laughs> before he got home. So I had to be done by like 345, right? So um, you want to have your daily weekly habits around the schedule that you really want to, um, to live by. You've got to have some time scheduled in to coach people. The way this works is as you grow your paid coaching, then your access to your freebie sessions starts to recede. Does that make sense? Like you're, you're, it's the same amount of coaching time. You just are filling it now with paid recurring sessions and, um, and then you become less available for the sales sessions, but they are always part of your schedule um, so long as you're still selling one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching. Um, so I think that's all I really wanted to cover today. Um, I wanna make sure you guys, and you can obviously unmute yourself whether you're here by phone, audio, or video, you can unmute yourself and ask any questions that you want. Or it doesn't seem like there's anybody who said something in the chat. So um, I wanted to ask a question. Oh yeah, hold hold on. My my volume is down. There, okay. I can. Um, the part that you're talking about on the necessity of the one-on-one -on -one versus group. Does that include? Because we talked about the time restriction. Does that include if you have something that's more automate it for them as part of the coaching program versus one-on-one -on -one where you're where you're personally talking to them or face-to-face -face or what have you well I'm not really sure can you ask it in a different way yeah I'm like it Sorry. sounded horrible when it came out but you talked about how the one-on-one -on -one one-on-one -on -one coaching versus group can feel very time constricted yeah but you're also saying that the one-on-one -on -one coaching is the fastest way to build your coaching oh. book. Yeah. So do that also to avoid the constricted feeling. Can that coaching be something where some parts of it are more automated? Yes. You know? Okay. So not everybody feels constricted by that, right? Like for me, I felt constricted because when I looked at my calendar, like I started just um, I was, I was being seduced by women who wow is what was happening. Right. And so like, that's all I really wanted to do. And then I'd have like these clients who I dearly loved and I was responsible to the work. Right. Like, you know, um, and so I felt constricted, not everybody feels constricted or restricted. They like some people here might have a dream of like, a, a you know, I, I say 20 people, I can't even imagine 20 private one-on-one -on -one clients, but like, you know, they might have, that might be their dream. Right. So if you don't feel constricted by the one-on-one -on -one, <laughs> fine right like I felt constricted by um the one-on-one -on -one. um and also because I'm practical when I say like um if you if you have to make money I've never not had to make money does that make sense like I always was the breadwinner in my family like I and I put myself through college like, I've never had not not been it, been in a position where it didn't matter if I made money or not, right? And so if you're in that position, the fastest way to get to a place where you have that leveraged income, right? Through automated programs, whatever, the fastest way is to sell one-on-one -on -one coaching, right? Um, and then by the way, if you have some of those automated programs, then you can, like when I would sell um, that coaching, it was like one-on-one, -on -one co like private coaching, 
blueprint, which is private, but it's one, one and done, right? And then I might have, I don't know, I don't, whatever my third option was back then. But like, um, if you have automated stuff, then it's like, here are the three ways we can move forward. Dep and I always say, like, you guys take this if you want it. I always say, depending on your budget and sense of urgency, right? You choose what works for you, depending on your budget and sense of urgency. And, um, but based on, what you, we discussed, I recommend X, right? And so if you have those automated programs, you can offer them the one-on-one -on -one at a rate that uh, makes you feel expanded <laughs> versus restricted, right? Um, or you can give them some other options. So I, that's how I would, if you have those, that's how I would use it now. But what I was saying was like, a lot of people are trying to build all this demand without actually impacting people in the one-on-one, -on -one, right? Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Awesome. That, that was a great question. Thank you for asking that. Sure. Uh, anybody else have any specific questions, comments, rebuttals, objections? Any of it is fine here. All right, I'm going to um, cut the recording.